This is Anka Rakas. No relation. I'm a very spiritual person. I start out each day thanking the man for the sunrise, for the land I walk on, for the air I breathe, and for this show, The Era of Reconstruction. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one major question. Who the heck was Trump debating last night? Was he debating <laughs> Hyden Biden or Joe Walrus? And listen, <laughs> I, know, I know why I'm calling oh, him Joe Walrus because he was just a huge, big, wet distraction for Trump as well as the viewers. But we're going to figure this out. We're definitely going to figure this out. Welcome to the Era of Reconstruction podcast of New Journey Pack Production. For this Wednesday, September the 30th, 2020, I'm Darren Williams, your host and director of policy and endorsement at New Journey PAC. Joining me is AJ Swenson. She is our chief of staff. AJ, you want to say hello? Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm excited. I'm, I cannot wait to get into this today. Good, good. And then we have our main man, Audrey Pruitt. He is our CEO. Audrey, you want to say something? Hello, Darren. Hello, AJ. Good, good. You know, everyone was anticipating this uh, debate last night, and and I think even President Trump was. Uh, The huge problem that I think he had, as well as a lot of the viewers had, was that it seemed to be that he was debating two people. He just wasn't debating uh, Joe Biden. I don't think Joe Biden really wanted to debate I think uh, Chris Wallace wanted to be the obstacle <laughs> and to be a part of the debate. Now, yeah. um, moderators are supposed to be invisible. They are. Um, they are supposed to just ask the question and let the two candidates go at it. And if things get a little bit out of hand, then you know perhaps they step in and maybe give a comment or two. But it seemed the case that Chris Wallace wanted to be a part of the news cycle. Um, and he became very much a part of the debate, whether it was the news cycle, but he was more so a part of the debate. And I think that kind of threw things a little bit to the left um, for the debate and kind of helping Joe Biden. Um, And so we want to discuss that, Chris Wallace. We want to discuss how President Trump's performance was, as well as we want to talk about Joe Biden and um, how he fared. Because I, I think the bar was extremely low for this guy. I mean, what do you think? Audrey, you want to go first? No, I'm letting you go first. <laughs> oh, what a gentleman. Okay. Welcome, um, girl. Like you said, the Joe Biden couldn't, the only way he would be hurt by doing debates with Donald Trump. I'm going to need you to say his name right. <laughs> what did I say? You said Biden. Biden. His name is Hyden. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so, speaking of Hyden, the, the, really, the only thing that Biden had to do was to get out of the basement, to face the American people, and talk like a normal politician. You know, his focus was connecting with the American people, showing that Trump makes everything about him instead of about Americans, um, and seeming competent. So that was really all he had to do. He, he's in the lead, and when you're in the lead, all you need to do is maintain the lead. It's kind of like in a basketball game, you know, when they only have a couple minutes or so left, the winning team is just wasting time on the clock. They're, all they have to do is just maintain that lead. They don't need to take any risky plays or anything like that. So that's the strategy Biden is doing right now. Mm. And he, you know, based on that, he, he did well last night. You think his uh, strategy or the way he went about it was extremely scripted? I mean, it's, it sounded like it was. Well, before Trump, we expected politicians to be scripted to a certain degree. I mean, Joe sounded pretty robotic. I think there was, and, and the reason why I mentioned that, there was a couple of times when Joe was uh, getting frustrated that basically he looked to the camera, and I probably they told him, there's, his handler said, look, when, when you start to get frustrated and you see yourself um, almost fumbling, look to the camera and start talking to the American people. He basically never looked at Trump when they were debating. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it seems extremely scripted. But like you just said, I mean, they're pretty much scripted. Mm-hmm. I Biden um, Biden cleared the hurdle. I my observation was um, Biden did a thing looking into the camera talking to American people. I really think 
I actually sort of think that might have been effective on the margins. I, I go back to what I said <clears throat> yesterday. This is about – actually, I have so many conversations today. I think I said it on this podcast. Maybe I said it on <laughs> someone else's podcast. But – um, I this is this is an election I believe that's on the margins. It's it's not on the ninety percent of people are voting for whoever they're voting for. Ten percent of people don't know, and I believe for that ten percent, perhaps looking into the camera and actually talking, um, Biden hit some themes. He did do some narrative themes uh, last night. I actually took a note of uh, something that somebody said, but. Uh, um, uh, but he did some narrative themes last night. And one of those themes was Trump, you're a liar. Everything you say is a liar, is a lie. He hit that. He hit that over and over again. And that's something that struck with me. You can't believe this guy. That's, and that's the downfall of being President Trump and, and, and phrasing stuff in some inaccurate ways that you have phrased things historically, starting with the number of crowds you had viewing your election. Um the problem with that is that it was that he's trying to frame Trump as a liar. And you can't believe what he said. So that way, when Trump did say some truths about Biden, Biden would go, well, that's not true. Right. So it is not, by the way, that the people, I believe, say, oh, Trump's an outright liar. That's not what the Trump is prone to exaggeration in reality. And I believe Biden is capitalizing on that saying, all right, maybe he wants you to walk away with, Biden wants you to walk away with, okay, Hunter may have taken a few dollars, but it wasn't $3 million. That's an exaggeration. And that's the problem when you're a person of exaggeration, which Trump has always been. It just hasn't been since his presidency. Everything's the biggest, the greatest. He's a New Yorker. That's how New Yorkers talk, particularly of his generation. So I, th- that's what I walked away with there. I, I just, I felt that Biden was extraordinarily effective in keeping the lie mantra going. Trump's problem was, his biggest problem was that he needed more substance. When he said, Biden, your plan is is insane, it's gonna cost the country X, he should have had some study, some reference, something he can just blurt out and say, according to this, about this, it was tried in 1972, this is a train wreck. Um, we talked about the Green New Deal. He should have been able to quote, well, Biden, you said on this and this day you were for the Green New Deal. And because you're talking to the 10%, you're not talking to your base in these debates. I really believe I, that. I agree with that. I, I think um, you're absolutely right. You are talking to the 10%. Um, people have pretty made up, pretty much made up their mind on, on who they're going to vote for. So you're right. You have those people that are straddling the fence. And, um, you know, I, I think... You know, Biden constantly saying that Trump is a liar. You can't believe Trump. He doesn't have a plan. That's been said for the past five, six years. Uh, And it's been proven that the man is not a liar. The man has a plan. So, you know, I don't know if people are really taking that seriously or is that something where it's, it's it's a, you know, get off me real quick type of comment that he makes because he doesn't have any policies to talk about. I mean, when you... Well, you say that's proven that it's not true, but... Is it really? In terms of people who aren't going to vote for Trump, is that a proven fact? Do, do, does the average, if you went out there and you asked 10 people, is Trump, does Trump lie? Okay. What would they say? Mm. I, I just, I don't, I don't know if they would say. Well, those 10 people, I mean, those 10, that 10%, they probably haven't even given the, a moment or or any time to really review the accomplishments of Trump. I mean, they're basically going off of what the media has said. Well, even but that, if he's but that, accomplished things, it doesn't mean not, he doesn't but, also lie. Right, but but well, this is the thing, and I, and I've always yeah. believed this: we take Trump seriously. We don't take him literally, like you just said. He yeah. exaggerates, but those who don't take him seriously. We'll take him literally. Every yeah. single thing he says, yeah. they will take it literally and they'll take okay. it out of context. And if it's not exact to the penny, mm-hmm. then, oh, the man is lying. It's, no, he's not, like you said, yeah. he exaggerates. We all exaggerate. You know, it was fantastic. It was big. It was it was huge. Eh, you know, okay, I get it. You know, because I take you seriously. I'm not taking you literally. I'm well, taking but, you seriously. But what I'm saying is, even I, I concede and I agree with you, it's the media's fault. That, that part doesn't matter. The question is, it doesn't matter the reason why they think he's lying. 
even if he doesn't, it's like saying if if I was black and ninety nine percent of people thought I was white, it doesn't matter that I'm really black. It matters that people think I'm white. So it's the same thing. It doesn't matter that Trump is not lying. It matters that the ten percent think he's lying, regardless of the reason. Well, I don't think there's anything one can do about that. I mean, that's just. But that's the problem. If that's the case, mm-hmm. Biden is effective in his narrative then, because he's he's. Hillary didn't do this, but Biden did. Biden said, okay, all the media is for me, so I'm just going to ride the media coattails. Normally, the media rides the presidential coattails. Right. And I think now what's happening is <laughs> Biden is saying, oh, the media hates Trump. I'm Whatever story they're pushing, I'm going to ride. Okay, mm-hmm. and, and if that's the case, then I go back to what I just said. <laughs> that story has been road hard and put away wet <laughs> for almost... Uh, yeah. Going on six years, and and either Trump is a mastermind yeah. at weaseling through any and everything, <laughs> or it's a big lie. And at some point, people have got to say, you know what? Maybe the man isn't a liar. But I don't think just... we're at that point. Yeah. Co- <laughs> COVID, for example, right? I mean, I, the question is: Does the ten percent passing every day? Do they hear something Trump says, and they believe it? So when Trump says something, Hunter Biden took three and a half million dollars from the Chinese. Do they, well, first of all, number one, I actually believe people don't give a crap, but Mm -hmm. do they really believe it? That's the the question. If Donald Trump says something, do you believe it? But I I don't think the election actually teeters on that. He didn't even really respond to that. He just said, that's been debunked. That's been debunked. Yeah. By who? Snopes? But, But this is the difference. Biden, for all of his issues, he does not have the reputation of a liar. Trump has that reputation. Mm -hmm. Legit or not legit, Trump has a rat because of the media. media, Trump has a reputation of not telling the truth. Right. So when you're faced with two people, and and Biden, you can say he's a part of the swamp, he's this, he's ignorant, he's dumb, he's stupid. He does not have a reputation of being untruthful. So when he says, come on, man, that's been debunked, come on. It is basically, I don't think people are walking away saying, oh, Trump is lying. I think they're saying, uh, he's exaggerating again. That's the problem. On that, I don't think so. Because I I think with stuff like that, you know, and Joe, he he almost said, you know, yes, my son, he, he said my son struggled with drugs, blah, blah, blah. He acknowledged that, but he didn't acknowledge the stuff that his son, he, how is he getting money from Moscow? How is he getting money from Ukraine? I don't think that that was a mute point. I do think that people understand that once, as Trump laid out the argument, once you were vice president, your son started getting paid internationally from governments that aren't necessarily our allies. So I don't, I don't think that, that was a mute point. Do you I, think that I, I think the sympathy card resonated with when he said, "Oh yeah, my my son struggled with drugs." That kind of like parlayed him off of yeah. you know, having to explain the Russian money. But so, then at the same Ukraine, time, yeah. the argument then is saying, well, I think at worst, even if you say, oh, people responded to uh, Trump saying that, then at worst you say, okay, both these guys got money from Russia because of the story that just came out that uh, Trump, what was it? He d- d- did some kind of hotel deal or something mm-hmm. and got money paid from the Philippines and from Thailand and from Russia and from whomever else because it was legit money. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I guess the... Joe Biden's biggest argument is this. Um, do you see this craziness? Vote for me. This is why he's generic. Well, and, and you know what? I, I you think see this that's craziness? What, right. And that's, what he's, that's what he was coached on to do the whole time. This man over here is crazy. That's this why Trump shouldn't insane. have interrupted him like that. Well, oh, I, I will I'm give so you that. There, was, there were many times when Joe was about to fumble, and then President Trump went in there and saved him. Yeah, <laughs> or it was either him. Trump was gonna save him or Chris Wallace, <laughs> Chris Wallace was gonna was save him. Right. Yeah, Every exactly. time Joe was like, "Oh no!" Someone stepped in and no. saved the day. And I believe Trump was ready to debate. I mean, that the first five minutes, it was like I think Trump yeah. was ready. I think he was more ready than most people expected him to be ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Joe Biden's bar was so low, guys, and I don't know. I Did felt you feel sorry for the man. He was getting punched in the no, head. There was, <laughs> there was a moment. Though, there was a moment, and because we all watched the debate together, yeah, we were all right, at the right. same. We right. were at a private donor's house, and we were all watching the debate together. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it, we the, the same thing struck me. I think I turned to Angela at the time. The thing the thing struck me and said, um, I, I was struck with, I felt Trump had interrupted. It was just like, it was just a little too much. Mm-hmm. It was just a little too much. Because I think, what did you say? <laughs> I think Darren said, oh, whatever they ejected it with is not going to last 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. But he had to keep, no, was that you? That was my friend, yeah. Oh, that was your friend. Mm-hmm. He needed to keep talking. I think Trump should have just let him talk himself stupid. Exactly, exactly. Like the two-minute sections, anyone can make it through two minutes. Yeah. So by interrupting so often and not forcing the person to have to continue to prove their point, that two-minute talking point that could have been taught, memorized, whatever, once you get that out, your time's up. Yeah. And then all you're doing is going back and forth. That's not true. You're a liar. That's debunked. Then there's all this little tit for tat, which takes, you know, one brain cell. Yeah, I, so. I, and I felt if you're going to attack Hunter Biden, you should come, you should have came with the evidence. You should have said you became vice president on X date. Hunter Biden then went to China on X date. He received X amount of deposits. It was this much, according to the New York Times, Washington Post, Seattle, uh, uh, Chicago Tribune. He could have cited sources, but he did say once you were president. He did give a loose timeline. A loose timeline, but it just, it wasn't enough to really hammer home. Anyway, why would you... Yeah. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be a substantive debate. I mean, you've only got two minutes to talk anyway, so I don't think anyone oh, was expecting, you know, full policy layout. But they should, Trump should have done it. It would have surprised people. Well, I think I, the I, thing, and I talked about this yesterday. He just needed to prove that he could be measured um, and still aggressive. Ooh, I think Biden. No, no Trump. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I, I think it started out very well because they they of course talked about. Um, Trump's pick, uh, Amy Amy Coney Barrett, who was mm-hmm. excellent, and how the question that Chris Wallace asked was, uh, the second part of that question is, how is she going to, uh, where is she going to lead the court? As if she was, she's going to be the, the, the head of the court when she gets <laughs> there. And so, But the great thing that Trump said, he pointed out um, what the former uh, Justice Ruth said, that, you know, oh, he's yeah, the president for... Four, four years, years, not three. three years. Right. He explained that very well. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a great um, understanding to people because, you know, you look at what Obama was faced with and he could have had someone, that particular yeah. person that he picked. Well, Trump said through, elections right, have consequences. Right, elections right. have consequences. 2016, 2018 election. Yeah. His they, response they to that one Senate. was yeah. good. Yep, absolutely. So I think he was he was very ready for that, but um, but you know. so was Joe Biden because you saw how he t- turned and flipped the argument to being about dismantling the Affordable Care Act. Yes, you yeah, saw yeah how he did that. well because 2018, mm-hmm. that's what was they ran on. Yes, was health care to get back the house. Forty mm-hmm. some odd. Uh, that's what they ran on was health care and Affordable Care Act, and I did feel. Trump answered pretty well, but I did feel that they needed to have a better plan for the Affordable Care Act. Did Trump even mention the platinum plan last night? No. No. That was surprising. And I'm glad you brought that up because also when they asked, when Chris Wallace asked, why should people trust you to handle race in America? I was very... You know, he started started off talking about why black people shouldn't trust Joe... And then switch to talking about law and order, which to me is a racial statement to yeah. say just to, to start off saying, you know, why sh- black you should be begging blacks for their vote, which I thought, you know, amen. After all the black people that you push to be locked up for a quarter of cocaine, as he famously said on the floor. But then to then skip to, you know, none of the sheriffs support you. All the cops support me. Cops support me. That's a statement in and of itself yeah. that you switch to that. And people mm-hmm. will take that however they want. Well, you know what? What you just said is right. And I think he should have hammered home a lot of the gaffes that uh, Joe Biden had mentioned in reference to black people not being diverse. Uh, if you vote Democrat, you're not black. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I, I think he should have continued to hit home on that and then came with the, uh, the, the law enforcement. So. But you're right about that. I don't know. The question is this. Did the debate 
I don't, first of all, I don't think it converted anybody within the 90%. Sometimes a debate moment can convert someone within the uh, 90% or somebody on the edge. Um, when Obama said to Mitt Romney, the 80s called and they want their foreign policy back. You know, that was a moment where some people could say, yeah, he seems a little stuffy, a little like back in the, and it wasn't about foreign policy. That was about a narrative they're trying to build Romney in general, that he is back in the, as a right. robber baron, wolf of Wall Street of the 80s. Right. Uh, so what I believe, I don't think anyone changed, I don't think anyone changed their minds. I do think my gut is telling me some people said, the people that are in the 10% are saying, okay, you know, all right, Biden seems to be okay. Now I'm listening. In other words, Biden answered the question. I'm not. I'm not full of dementia. I'm not senile. That's a narrative. That's done. So now the question is, okay. Now that I okay, Biden's not crazy. Now let me figure out what I really think. And I do believe Trump has about two weeks, two and a half weeks to turn around. I don't think it's unless there's some kind of bombshell in the last week. I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's got about two weeks, two and a half weeks. To capture that 10%. Well, you know, people hold the worst until close. Yeah. So. It, 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 listen, I know Darren doesn't like my 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 referencing of polls, but mm -hmm. I'm looking again. But Trump is upside down now in Michigan, upside down in Pennsylvania, upside down in Arizona, almost upside down in Iowa. I mean... Is there is there a shy Tory vote out there? That's a good question. Is there really? Let's let's. I, I just want to ask you: Is there really a hidden? Is there enough hidden vote? We're talking at least two to three percent mm -hmm. hidden vote that everybody's going to be surprised about. People that didn't vote before that are coming out or turn turn voters. I think people are more know. afraid now than they were four years ago. You might be right. You know, people who would who had the you know sign in their yard four years ago wouldn't do that today. That's I think true. people are more private about who they're going to vote for than what they were back in 2016. Um, with the violence, um, you know, with the persecution, all that stuff, people are like, you know, what I'm going to keep. And I, I said this earlier. I'm going to keep it to myself. This is this is private, yeah. like my finances or like my health or whatever it is. I'm going to keep my vote private. Like my tax returns. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. my tax returns. And basically, I'm going to show you who I support when I'm at the when I'm at the ballot box. And though and if I get out there and you ask me, "Oh, did you vote for Joe Biden?" Yeah, 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 I vote for Joe Biden. None of your business. But I mean, I do believe that there is a huge population, okay. even along Democrats. I, I, you know what? There you I go, exaggerating. Huge. Okay. Talking about mass. Get the tape. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> but I, I think there is a sizable amount of even Democrats who are saying, you know what? This is this is ridiculous. I'm going to continue to tell my friends, mm. oh, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden. I'm a Democrat, whatever the case may be. But I got to consider my well-being. I got to consider my my family, my livelihood. I got to consider these things. And to be honest with you, was the last four years that traumatic for me? I mean, my 401k came back. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you might. I was talking to a group of young. Um, and you know, and Democrats young, are all about money. I was talking about you yeah, right now. I was talking to a group to a group of young black uh, women. Uh, I, something happened. I don't know. I was at the store. Or something I had to pin on. Um, and by the way, that's a nice suit you got there. Thank you, thank you. I try. For those, I try. For those of you who are on the video, we're going to be on video too. Audrey has the so best tailored suits. I will be launching a fashion tip podcast. Exactly. <laughs> well, go ahead. Uh, but I, I was with a group of young. Um, I wasn't with them per se. I ran into a group of young black women, like three or whatever, and I didn't expect. I don't know what happened. Yeah, Something like happened. That. I was on the phone, and the girl heard me on the phone. And she said. Are you a Trump supporter? Uh, I said, yes. I said, that's a problem. And then I was surprised. She said, 
what do you think? And I told her, I said, listen, I don't, I, you know, I like President Trump. I think he's doing a great job. Doesn't get a fair shake. And I kept it simple. And she looked at me and she said, she said, yeah, you know, I don't know. I just don't think he's that racist. I think he just says what he wants to say. Boom. And people don't like it. There you go. And so there is an element that Darren's talking about that might be, the question is, do they vote? And will she, I don't know, I should have asked. I didn't even think to ask. Mm -hmm. That's the question. And you're right. I have had a lot of people that, Younger people, I've had some younger people say, you know, I don't, even people in the building that we work that know where where the pack is located. We have we're in a nice big giant building. The owner of the building happens to be a Trump supporter, but half people, more than half people in the building are not. But I've had a lot of people say that mm. to say, and not everybody does. Like we have a, a a great lady that we're all friends with. I think Trump's the biggest racist on the planet. Mm. But I've had a lot of people say. You know what? I don't think he's really right. So the question, I mean, does that translate into votes? Does that translate? I don't know if these three young women are going to vote. Mm -hmm. And my gut would tell me that they probably aren't. That if they were in there, they probably would select Trump. But they're probably not going to go. And I don't know, but as a side note, the Republican Party's done a crap job registering people. I know they've increased numbers, they've done better lately, but these are the kind of young people that need to be captured. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, the, of all the black people I know that, you know, don't hate Trump, don't think he's a liar, don't think he's a racist, they still say, I'm not going to vote for him. Okay. I'm just not going to vote, but I don't think that. So he's done enough where people. Um, believe he's good for the economy. People don't believe he's racist, but not enough to, to get, get these out people to say, to "I want to vote. I want to support." And I, I want to. You mentioned uh, slightly four hundred one ks. I want to point to that as a moment. This is when I. These are the things I love that Trump does. Is that some? Even though he's this big billionaire, probably never needed for anything in his life. He somehow finds these things that matter to normal Americans and oh. kind of pinpoints those. He did it with the dishwashers. He did it with the dishwasher. Yeah. Oh my gosh! When yeah. I so that was my job. That's always my job growing up, and to this day, I will use a dishwasher. Don't ask me to wash no dishes. <laughs> no, I know what. So, Girl, got my nails we done. We don't we play gonna, that. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Yeah. So <laughs> when he said, when he talked about the regulations that Obama put in place, yeah. that. They couldn't use the water that they need. My dishes weren't getting clean. That was frustrating. And I was like, how does he know that? When he talked yes last night about what Joe Biden tried to say, oh, all you care about is the stock market. Trump hit him back and said, when, f when the stock market goes up, so do 401ks. That's right. Everybody does well when the stock market goes up. Jobs go up. And I just, I so appreciated that simple way to bring those things together. Yeah. Trump yeah. has a practicality to him. Well, let me tell you something. What you just saying, what you just said, AJ, maybe he should have turned to the camera and right. spoke to the American people and said that. You remember, he oh, doesn't yeah. understand the way that this works. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't know that the stock market affects you. Exactly. I know. And AJ, AJ's got the yeah, end, she in the go. bike now yelling at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like, the camera, folks. And you're right. You're right. Now I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Can, I want to share camera. with you. You know who Melissa Harris Perry is? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, oh. It, it, Get this. MSNBC? This is what yeah. she tweeted out. Is she still alive? Cancel oh the debates. God. The debates are now a danger to public safety <laughs> and a direct threat to black life. Oh, my god! Cancel gosh. the debates. Oh, my god! This is, anyway. She's I, not even on MSNBC anymore, and that's why. Foolishness. That's Can't what even. she said? She said cancel the And by the way, a lot of black commentators now are coming out saying cancel the, cancel the debates. Um, they were, uh, Donald Trump is the worst president we've ever had. Joe Biden tweeted out. And a lot of people, uh, 1 million people liked it, 240,000, 225,000, excuse me, retweets. That's Russia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's Hunter. Yeah. That's Hunter Biden. <laughs> that's Hunter Biden. His but speaking of that, the Ch have you seen the ads from China now? Yeah. The Chinese newspapers are putting ads targeting black voters. Yep. 
in an incredibly anti, racially insensitive yeah. way, but anti -American they still are. Anti-American ads. Yeah. yeah. Saying, this get, is, saying, showing the police running after black people, and the yeah. caption is, get blacky. Get blacky. Yeah. I mean, this is... In a Chinese newspaper. <laughs> this is... But anyway, Darren, I, 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 I think AJ's right. Trump has that practical way to... I think... You know what I think Trump has to do to win this election? I'm going to tell you. He needs to get in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania... Florida and just go rally to rally to rally to rally to rally and talk right. practical. And talk about dishwashers. That's, that's, right. that's, that's all he needs to do. Talk about You're 401ks. Saying, that's how he won. That's talk how he about won. education. Yep. Just yep. be practical. Yep. Right. And just say it straight as, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You, you know, I'm a little too loud for you, but guess what? You can wash your dishes. Yeah, it seemed like his focus in the debate was beating Joe Biden. And that was the complete wrong focus. You're right. His focus was connecting with the American people on a level he hasn't before and showing them that he's trustworthy. That's, yeah, that's but this great. But is, this you is know? the thing. I, I, I think those are two different settings, and you have to have two different attitudes, personalities. I mean, okay. one, he's in a when fight he, in a debate. He's in a fight. He's got <laughs> one guy, well, two guys, the fight again, <laughs> you know. But when he's at his rally, well, yeah. he, when he's at his rally, he's amongst friends, he's amongst people that love him, that appreciate him, that respect him. And so his guard level is way down, and he could be very comfortable. He knows who Chris Wallace is. Okay, now, was Joe Biden really going to make Trump uncomfortable? Really? Not necessarily, but Chris Wallace was going to aid in helping Joe Biden make feel, Trump feel uncomfortable. He could have done that, and everyone expected Chris Wallace to do that. No one would have been like, oh, I can't believe he, you know. Mm. Let me read. So I have some, I won't say his name. I'll tell you guys privately, but it's a, he's a high up muckety muck in D.C., real conservative. He's well connected to all the institutions. This is, this is what he just wrote me. Trump threw away an opportunity to make the case that he handled the coronavirus correctly and fairly well, and that his economic policies work because he can't control his impulse to engage in schoolyard insults. And WTF was he thinking when he died Im immediately and unequivocally denounced white supremacists. That was an elementary no-brainer. He does not seem to understand that the election turns on persuading, emphasis by the way this guy, undecided voters and of course he made the strategic mistake of lowering expectations for Biden's performance so low that it, short of full display of dementia Biden counted as a win that was the least substantive debate in US history and made them both look like raving idiots all of which means that the chance of Biden victory is all that much higher which is depressing yeah this is rock rim conservative what he wrote agreed i mean 3 minutes into the debate you have trump making the smart comment did you just use the word smart? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you got to look Three at it. Three and a half minutes funny. into the debate. I'm sorry, it was funny. Joe Biden started with you the didn't smart go. You graduated at the lowest. Yeah. Ooh. You should never use what, the word school? smart with me. Yeah. Um, you you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of your college. <laughs> There's nothing smart about you. 47 years, you've done nothing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I have to separate. That's what I'm. The struggle is this. I love President Trump so much that was pretty that for funny. me. Oh, that was enjoyable. I just yeah. love it. I, I, it was but, strategic. But, I thought it was. But it's a low. It's br it's br why bring the debate down? I mean, this I this is how he got rid of the sixteen uh, or how many other Republicans before. But now you're president. Okay, so I, I think it's different. You know, before you were trying to beat out. A, over a dozen people for the nomination. Needed, now you are the president. He needed to, I felt his, Trump needed to be, Darren, Trump needed to be the president that was the first State of the Union he gave. Yeah. That's the president that needed to show up to this debate for the 10%. I've loved all his State of the Union. So all of them, actually. And let me They've tell you, those great. State of the Unions have gotten better and better and better. Yeah. This is my thing with Trump. Okay. He's a New Yorker. He changes fighting styles <laughs> seamlessly. You're expecting him to do a one-two or rope-a-dope over and over and over again, but the man changes his style. That's the brilliance about it. He's, what is he, 70? How old is he? He's in his It 70s. is amazing that he is that. Right. He, he's 70 years old. You're not going to teach an old dog new tricks. 
as long as he protects the country from foreign invaders and he stays out of the way of capitalism and allows it to rule, I'm perfectly fine. I don't care with the way he acts or the Because you already he said, support but him. But we got to get the people that don't support right. him, bro. And, and listen, but see, this is the thing. He has proven in the last four years that everything that the man says, he heard does. Heard that. Heard that. Yes, but uh, listen, and I, you're absolutely right. You've heard that. It's mm -hmm. been said over and over again, but it's evidence. And so for that 10%, it's, it's almost like unemployment will never be um, um, zero because you'll yeah. just have 5% that's just their bums and they don't ever want to work. So you're going to have that 10% that just, I don't want to call them bums, but they're just never going to get on the Trump chain. When he was there uh, last night, Trump, when Trump was at the debate last night and he said, yes, yes, stand back and uh, stand by to the Proud Boys. First of all, how the Proud Boys became, I know... <laughs> Oh, what's his name? I said I know him. I forgot his name. Gavin. Uh, Gavin. I've yeah. met him. I've yeah. eaten with him. I've talked with him. I talked to him no more than a month ago when he was here in Florida doing an event. You were there with me, AJ. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I have not, I don't know anything specific about the Proud Boys. When they first had some event here, I went to it. Nobody said it. Nobody was like, darky, you can't. People came up, shook my hand, talk. We, we talked about Trump. So, first of all, with this Proud Boys thing, I have no idea how the Proud Boys morphed themselves into the modern-day KKK. Uh, the, the Southern Poverty Law Center labeled them as a... Uh, well, they also labeled Ben Carson. Well, they, I mean, of course. <laughs> okay, don't put Ben Carson and the Proud Boys together, okay? No, but, no, no, no. But, but I'm just saying, point, they yeah. labeled Ben Carson. Yeah. I don't know what the Proud Boys have really done. Well, I, all, the mo the main thing that I've seen from them that I find offensive is their views of women. Okay, and so what are their views of women? So the they but that doesn't make them racist. I I I'm I'm honestly I'm I'm not sure about what you know they've done different rallies and stuff like that. I'm not sure about. I honestly haven't looked into everything that they do, everything that they say, but I don't know. They just sound like a bunch of incels. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't I don't know. Gavin has, he started Vice News. Mm -hmm. He never had a reputation. This is my problem with everybody that's accused of being racist. That's white. Mm -hmm. They don't have a history of racism. They don't. Until, Until they come under Republican politics. Trump being number one. This is, this <laughs> is crazy. Yeah, the man was never racist until he so came So you have, the this group believes men, especially white men in West culture, are under siege or views why genocide. This is, this is what Wikipedia says. But what do they say? Like, I don't know, I have, I, I I don't know. I mean, all I know is Gavin Newsom, I know he did one interview where he said, where he's talked about, hey, I love my heritage, I love my European white history, blah, 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 blah. And at the time he said that, I did not have a, that was like 2010, I think. Mm -hmm. And at the time he said that, I didn't have a problem. I was trying to find it, I know it's here somewhere. I didn't have a problem with it because you have you, should, yeah. you have put things in a racial identity box. And once you start saying, and I don't mean you guys, I mean the liberal media, mm -hmm. once you're saying it's about being black, it's about being Indian, it's about being Asian, it's about being Jew, it's about being, well, the largest racial voting racial demographic group in the country is going to eventually going to say, well, what? what about being white? What? Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have an issue with that. Plus, I've met the guy. And I've never, I've met some down and out racist folks. And I just didn't, you know, Gavin was, you know, maybe that's change. But I don't know, a month from a month ago? Now, saying he had, they have some views, some antiquated views about women, maybe they don't believe women, women should stay at home or something. I don't even know that. I've never heard that. I mean, know. he's joked about women being dumb and stuff like that. Oh, well, can we lie? Let's take, all, let's take every single black man that's joked about that. I mean, there's no, I, I don't think. Well, you say Because jokes. people have said that. No, I'm saying, I, mean, I, that, I is think that, that, that part he of takes. His platform? I think he takes being politically correct to an unnecessary level that allows him to be controversial. And I think he revels in being controversial. And you get what comes with that. You get what comes with that. You know what you're saying. You're not stupid. To me, Trump, to me, the answer to the Proud Boys unless Trump knows, which I don't think he does, should have been, I've met Gavin Newsom. He didn't explain, the, the leader of the Proud Boys, he never explained any racism to me. 
I denounce racism. I denounce white supremacy. And if the Proud Boys is a white supremacist group, I denounce them too. Well, shouldn't but you I know? Don't know that. Why say if? Do you do you know? Because or do you I not don't know? know. I don't know. If someone said to me right now, "Will you denounce the white Proud Boys as a white supremacist group?" I'm going to say no. I would say, why not just say, if the Proud Boys are white supremacists, I denounce them. What is that? What I just said? You said <laughs> other stuff in it that sounds like a but. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's. No, you I don't think fall he. Into their narrative. That's. I think what Audrey is trying to say is, I don't know them. I don't. I when I've spoken to them because the they, media does that. They want. They only they, do it to Republican right. people. They, they want you to fall. They want into to their ask narrative. you, right. what do you think about this? What do you think about climate change? What do you think about this? What do you? Who's is this person racist? Is this person racist? They never you, ask the right. left that do question. You denounce that person. All he has to say is if. I'm not sure. I honestly don't understand. But if they are, I denounce white Any, supremacy. He should have said. Well, he, he said that. That's he, a very simple thing to avoid a gotcha. Well, he, one, right. Well, one can say, listen, if anyone is racist, I denounce them. Bottom line, it doesn't yeah, have to specifically that, be the proud very, boys. If it, if they are fine, if whoever any, else whoever is, whoever is racist, racist in the country, country them, right? I denounce. <laughs> and it. then he should have brought up the what he's doing in the platinum plan for K, the KKK. Um, you know, labeling them as terrorists, like. He had opportunities to really use that and didn't take it. Well, listen, I, you know, the KKK, I think you can, you can fit their membership in a phone group. I, you know, listen, in their heyday back in the 20s and 30s, maybe 2 million or whatever, now you'd be hard-pressed to find, like, huge members of the KKK running around here. You're more likely to find Antifa and BLM. Uh, no one is denouncing them. Um, Joe Biden is not denouncing them. Even when, when Trump was hitting him with, do you support law enforcement? Joe Biden would never say, you know, he would say, oh, I, I support law. Well, do you support order? You know, well, that's the, a the, the, the Trump was trying to get with him with a gotcha. You guys were just talking about gotchas people were getting Trump with. Trump was trying to get him with a gotcha well, by saying that. Would, would say Trump, you support law and order, you know which Trump, Trump has doing? made, you know, his, his tagline. Trump line. was, it was a strategic plan to separate Joe from the radical left. And, and he was doing it very well. Remember he said, well, you just lost the left. To associate him with the, the left. Oh, no, no, no. What he was trying to do, he was trying to disassociate him with the left. So with the radical left. So those radical left people who are looking to vote for Joe because they believe, well, he hates the cops and he's going to defund them, which Joe is not going to defund the cops. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, this and guy's he said lying that. to us. Yeah. This guy's completely lying to us. And so that gives... Uh, the opportunity for Trump to say, hey, listen, this guy is lying to you. He's not going to defund. He's, he doesn't really support you. He's just telling you that he does just so he can get your vote. Yeah. So according to the Proud Boys website, uh, they have these central tenets. Minimum government, maximum freedom, anti-political correctness, anti-drug war, closed borders, anti-racial guilt, anti-racism. Those are probably two. Pro-free speech, pro-gun rights, glorifying the entrepreneur, venerating the housewife, Reestating a spirit of Western civilization. These are our central tenets. Um, uh, a, to become a proud boy is that a man declare that he is a, quote, this is where probably the SPLC and maybe Angela has some issues, declare he is a Western chauvinist who refuses to apologize for creating the modern world. We do not discriminate based upon race or sexual orientation or preference. Oh, I didn't even know that. I'm going to join the Proud Boys. We are not an ism phobic <laughs> that fits the left's narrative. We truly believe that the West is best and welcome those who believe the same tenets as us. So basically, they subscribe to a more traditional view of... They're not saying women can't work. They're right. just saying we do applaud a house, a woman who yeah, wants yeah, to stay we don't home scorn that. and raise kids. We don't yeah, scorn that. that. The what? left scorns Is that, that a problem? Right I don't think that's a... I'm, I don't have any interest in continuing to discuss them. But if you want to... No, no, no. He said, is that a problem with women? I'm going to ask, is that a problem with you? Yeah. I'm not saying women. I'm saying you. I, but that this is all the about household? defending I mean, the Proud the Boys, and I don't see why. Not, I no, we're not defending time. the Proud Boys at all. It's not about defending the Proud Boys. We're, we're just not it lumping them in as a racist well, group. Well, regardless of the fact well, that... Well, I don't think we... Or a sexist group. Is that what you said? They're a sexist I group? I, I think that at least Gavin McInnes has said sexist things, and if you say sexist things, you're probably what sexist. What sexist things have he said? I just said? told you he said he made comments about women being dumb. Well, That's sexist, but don't you, you think? Was, but you said, you said out of your own mouth he was joking. You said he made a joke about women being dumb. That's not funny I made a to joke about women being dumb. I made dumb. a joke about blonde. I made a joke about dumb men. 
Lazy men that well, don't want to work. Did, did you say all men? No, sexist. Sexist. Sexist? <laughs> I don't. I, my point is he makes a point of being controversial and saying things that he knows are well, not, not only not politically correct, <laughs> but offensive. But so you, whatever what? you controversy, anti, you get, that's what you get. You're smart. You know what you're doing. Wait a minute, so, to say that, that women I'm are not dumb or that you. men are dumb are con- is controversial? It's sexist to say. If I were to say all y'all black men are lazy, worthless. Well, he didn't say all you women. <laughs> you is that not? Is we that not? That. That's the sound bite. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the sound bite. That's <laughs> the sound bite. You but you see dumb. how that that's offensive. Duh. That's not rocket science. But did he say all women are dumb? He said women, he basically had a comment where he was okay. saying women are dumb, this. that's why they take jobs is whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to research this again. I, I got it. Waste I your gotta. time on that if you want. No, it, actually, I don't think it's a waste of time. I think it is. I, I what organizations important. were brought up in a major presidential debate in the last three presidential debates? Name an organization that was brought up in them that's outside of government. Black Lives Matter. And what else? Antifa. And what else? You just Proud gotta boys. keep saying what else, no matter how exactly. many I say. There's only three: Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and Proud Boys. What side? Because they they've are? all been at the same um, riots. They've been going at each other the, in different riots. That's the, why they all go together. They're all three. So to say, but I say this to dismiss that and say, oh, we should talk about it. Oh, this is not to talk about. It's not about defending. At a major presidential debate, you have three organizations brought up. BLM, Antifa, and Proud Boys. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're a part of the conversation. He's the one that brought them up. Trump. And that's perfectly No, they're not. Chris Wallace brought them up. No, Trump is the one that brought them up. I don't remember Chris Wallace saying them by name. Yeah, Trump said he he brought them up. Then guess what? That's even more of a reason to talk about him. Because of all the groups he could have brought up, guess who he brought up? Proud Boys. And that's the issue, that he brought them up. That's the problem. But they're a part of the discussion now. That's the problem. He brought so them into the discussion. So you don't think they should have been brought into the discussion? I, I don't think that, I think based on what the conversation was, and let me go back to where this I started. I Chris Wallace asked about the Proud Boys. No. no so let did. me bring it up. Where is that? So Joe Biden was making the point that Trump pours gasoline on the fire uh, when it comes to race issues, stuff like that. And... Then if you move forward, they they start going back and forth, blah, 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 about law and order. Trump said, I'll send in the National Guard, but you don't want the National Guard. Chris Wallace brings up White Antifa supremacy. and left-wing extremist groups and then says, but are you willing to condemn white supremacists and militia groups that and say they need to stand down? I'm looking for the transcript. I have the transcript in front of me. I can send it to you. Please do. I can. <laughs> Please do. Um, I'll send it to you once I've got it. I've got it. Okay, you got it. Um, so then Trump says, sure, I will do that. Chris says, are you prepared specifically to do that? Trump says, I would say almost everything I see from the left wing, not from the white wing. Chris Wallace said, but what are you saying? Trump says, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see peace. Chris Wallace says, well, do it, sir. Vice President Joe Biden says, say it, do it, say it. Trump says, what do you want me to call them? Give me a name. Go ahead. Who do you want me to condemn? Chris Wallace says, white supremacists and right-wing militia. Trump says, proud boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what somebody's got to do about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing problem. This is a left-wing. I think that was perfectly fine what he said. No, it, so it, what, what, what was all this? he had to say was, I condemn white supremacy. Instead, he says, what do you want me to say? What? But you see? You understand? Context? So, with, so, well, context is context is Trump's first statement. When Chris Wallace says you repeatedly criticize the vice president for not specifically calling out Tifa. I just read um, that. But are you willing tonight to condemn the white supremacists? And then when Trump says, I would say almost... Everything I see from I left just, wing. Yeah, I just read not that. From white thing. I wouldn't do anything. I want to see peace. Right. So is that not him denouncing? All he had. So this is the thing. If I ask you, can you say that all mac and cheese is bad? 
and you say, what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? <laughs> all I, I love all cheese. I love Mac. I, what do you want from me? What's the problem? Be specific. Say that you denounce so you're Mac just and saying cheese. You should have said, hey, white supremacy is what we talked about at the very beginning. Right. White supremacy is bad. Well, I don't disagree with that. Statement. So then you, you're you the one that brings in the Proud Boys to the conversation. And then you say, stand by. Stand back, stand by. Yeah, I don't know. I, I remember when I heard the stand by thing. I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I think Tim Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the frustration is this, is why do Republicans always have to denounce uh, so-called white, right, what is it, extreme right-wing groups? Uh, why are Democrats never uh, requested to denounce, uh, you know, BLM or or anti for any of these guys? Well, I think he could have made that argument. You're the one that was hanging with segregationists. You're the one eulogizing a segregationist. Joe Biden. Yeah, Trump oh, yeah. could have well, made absolutely. that. You're absolutely. the one. Why don't you have to denounce racism? You're the one that was call- talking about the jungle. You're the one that was saying, why do Indian Americans own all the Seven Elevens? You know, like you're the one. He could have done that. Oh, I see. Okay, so when so when Chris Wallace says white supremacy, white ring militia, after the president right. says what do you want to call them, that's the point where president should have said, you're arguing. President should have said, white supremacist, I denounce you. Not necessarily right wing militia, because that doesn't necessarily mean white supremacy. Whatever. <laughs> I think actually President Trump was being a rather. Um, Flip it and controversial in the sense when he did mention the Proud Boys. Do you think it was being I don't think I don't think that's the case. I don't think he was being flippant or controversial. I think he's asked the question so much that for him he took it out of a context, right? So I believe the president took out of context where he was. In other words, he's listening to that question in the vacuum of, I've done this a hundred times. Who are you who are you talking about when you say white supremacist? How many more times can I say right. I denounce white supremacy? How many more times? What? What do you want me to call him? That would have been a great thing to say. I think How many times do I have to denounce? I already have. How many times do I have to do this? For this, for you leftist media that's always trying to attack Republicans for being racist. How many times am I going to have to clarify my statement? Well, he didn't. (laughs) Well, he didn't. He didn't denounce it. And he he, listen, he shouldn't have to continuously denounce stuff. And he's right. He's like, you know, it's it's. What do you want but he to should do? have what said you? that. I think that's what you're arguing. Yeah. You're giving fodder. You're giving people what they want. Okay. The left what they want. Yeah. Well, I guess if the president did bring up Proud Boys, it appears by the transcript he did, then he probably shouldn't have brought it up. No. Oof. Well, you said all three of them uh, are generally at these um, well peaceful protests. All three of them the there. Point. So <laughs> BLM. <laughs> <laughs> BLM and Antifa <laughs> are the one. BLM and Antifa are the ones that are asked about. Um, asked about, and then now Proud Boys is in the conversation because of President Trump. Yeah, which I don't know. I don't know why that was at the forefront of his mind, unless he was just asked about it, or if he thought that that's what they were looking for. It could be. It could be. Um, you know, you, we can. We can find many errors that occurred in um, that first debate. I mean, it is a first debate. Hopefully, there will be two additional debates. Um, a lot of people, like you said, are saying no. We no, don't the media, to- CNN came out and said it, and so did a lot of people came out and said no more debates. Yeah, no more debates. Yeah. Because Trump interrupts. So that's ridiculous. That's stupid. That's- it's stupid. And Joe Biden made a lot of mistakes, too. I mean, he tried to say that Trump wanted to get rid of pre-existing conditions. That was a lie. Right, that was a, that is a lie. a complete lie. Yeah. Um, he, he tried to say that, that, you know, that's the attack on that. Um, that's ridiculous. He, he made, you know, a lot of different comments, actually, that I went through. It's like, that's not true. That's not something Trump has supported. And they should have been pushed back on completely. You know, Joe Biden was, you know, there were points where it's like, where is, what is he saying? What is he getting this from? And then I brought up earlier how he said, um, he said a a Arabic or Muslim term, meaning Allah willing, when they were talking about Trump's tax returns. And people were like, did he just say Allah willing on, you know, inshallah, which means, you know, God Allah willing. 
And people were like, is he his Muslim? campaign confirmed. Like, yes, he did say that. <laughs> is he Muslim? Why, so why? It's like stuff like that. When did Biden go over start talking about? When did Hyde start running around talking Muslim terms? <laughs> I don't, that was crazy well, he's, to he's me. He's been hanging with Obama for eight years. Come on now. He's going to he's gonna have Mazel to learn to They said, <laughs> oh, they said that's the Arabic. Forget about it. Biden was using, like, he was using a colloquial it, term as if, but, you know. Was but, dog whistling to his uh, but I don't. Oh do, you, do you think <laughs> Obama's really running around using Muslim terms? I don't think President don't Obama's. Think so? No. With Joe? No. That was odd. To, I'm like, wait, what? Well, they did have the Muslim Brotherhood in the White House quite often. And Joe <laughs> might have been going to somebody. <laughs> so, so, Joe, well, this is the problem with lowering the expectations that I think Angela was talking about before, or Darren. No, Darren was talking about. I think this is the problem, right? This is the problem before. Is that the folk, all Biden had to do was stay erect. Us and it's pathetic. <laughs> stay, stand up straight. He had to stand up straight, y'all. <laughs> all Biden. <laughs> oh. Ooh, sorry, Dr. Jill. Um, all Biden had to do was stay, stand up, uh, <laughs> straight, <laughs> straight, and answer questions without too many fumbles, and he cleared the bar. And that's sad, but it is indicative of what the Democrat Party Crap. is because if you look at it, who was in the same situation back in 2016? Remember when they were trying to get her in the van? <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> Hillary! Hillary was stubborn. She, she was like uh, with Cinderella. <laughs> yeah. she lost yeah. her Poor shoe. lady. I hope she got the help she needs. But I think this shows the discussion we're having. Our expectations for Trump are so high. They are. You're right. We want him to do well. We think he. We think he's the better option, and we know that he has the tools that he needs. But. You can tell expectations for Joe are so low. There's well, not even much as much critique for him. But some of that's because some of that is because we are in it day in and day out, and we know President Trump's capability. Right. Um, we believe in him. We want him to do well. So our toughest criticism I guess we were a little is disappointed. for him. I guess we're a little disappointed. Our yeah, our our, our 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 the onus is on him. Like we, as much as all that we're doing at New Journey Pack, we want. To reach the black community with all that Trump is doing, all the policies that he's passed that Darren yeah. was talking about before. Yeah. You've got the track record. You've got you have everything that you need to shoot this out of the park every single time against an easy opponent that no one people expect him. All people hope is is that he doesn't break out into the ABC song while he's talking, you know, because he forgot what he's gonna say. Yeah. So the expectations are all on Trump every debate to show up, to show out, to represent the party. And, you know, that's I think that's where the basis of this frustration that you might hear is coming from. We want him to succeed so much. And we hope that by constructively criticizing that some of this comes across as we believe in you, you can do better, you can win this. And this is how we think that can happen. I'm listen. I, I agree with you, and I, I think uh, this is this is the first debate. And Trump hasn't had a debate in what four years, and so you know, hey, he might have been a little rusty, right. uh, might have been a little ancient. And um, you know, I think going forward, if he does get an opportunity to have a second debate, uh, he's going to kill it. So he definitely um, what, Trump wins the next one. Adapts very quickly to a situation. Um, he's shown that even when he went into the White House, um, he had he was naive about certain things, but within the matter of months, uh, th he mastered it. And so he's just October fifteenth. That's right. the next debate. He's able to flow and able to change up fighting styles when necessary. Mm -hmm. And I think he did a good job um, this first debate. I really think he did. I think the only well, he issue did better than most presidents do yeah. their yeah. first time coming out. Yeah, Obama's first debate. You remember that? Oh, that yeah. was he horrible. <laughs> yeah, Bill Clinton's like, first debate, yeah. his second. It, it happens because okay. you get insulated in the presidency, right? And you get coddled Thank a little you. bit. Thank you. Yeah. But Trump hasn't been coddled, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, but um, I think he'll do very well. Um, but like you said, you, you're going to always have that five or ten percent that are just. 
Trump can save them from a burning mm-hmm. building, and they'll say, you know what, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you save me? You know, I know you didn't mean it. You're racist. You say because you're racist. You're racist. You're racist. Exactly. Yeah, racist. Exactly. So, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, this was an inspiring conversation. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So in 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 the coming days, we're going to be discussing more about this mm-hmm. um, about Biden. Biden. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, Chris Wallace is not going to be involved in the next discussion. He was mm-hmm. horrible. But I nonetheless, know. thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for being a part of. The era of reconstruction, and I'm I'm looking at Audrey here because he says he's standing we're, around looking at we're me. We're doing we're doing some internal we're, technical you know, stuff. We're, we're, we're testing. So <laughs> join us tomorrow on era of reconstruction. Thank you. Anka Ruckus again. No relation. This podcast is paid for by the New Journey Pack and not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee.